when you are in your slow season, a great survival mechanism is to work on the business. Dive deeply into working on the business. When you're so deeply involved in working on your business, you're not really paying attention to other things. But the reason why it helps you survive the slow season is because you start to get really creative. You start to remind yourself of what the vision is. You start to um, imagine, reimagine and remind yourself of what the bigger picture is, like where the company is going. You're doing things like um, upgrading to new systems. You can't help but to feel successful. You're having conversations like, yeah, so the reason that we're going to transfer from um, this system to this system is because the sales team needs to have a better flow. Like we need to get the follow up process, you know, in place. And also I need to be able to track my data and my analytics, but it's going to make me it's going to make it really, really easy for me to strategically market if I'm able to segment my audience. When you're having that kind of conversation, you can't lose the oomph factor for your business because you're literally so focused on working on the business and working on the business is where you are planning for and carrying out the vision that you have. The facts have to outweigh the feelings. The facts are everybody's going to feel this. The facts are every business is going to experience this. The facts are everything that's happening right now is normal. The facts justify your feelings, but because of the facts, that's why you got to continue to push through. Welcome to another edition of the Social Pro Podcast. We've got Donnie Wiggins here. Who ain't? Who ain't? Let's go. Let me get the clock. All right. Let's get this party started. Uh, today is an, an amazing day to have an amazing day. Green. Right. How's your get your microphone so the people can hear you, not only see I you. know that we did not start We 100% episode. started this episode with Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Chick-fil-A on your lips. Okay? No, finish your food. For the record, you guys, We can't hear you. We can only see you which shopping. Is good. For the record, you got for the record, Just you guys. Them. We're um, professional production here. <laughs> For the record, I am only eating a chicken biscuit from Chick-fil-A, not the chicken that David just finished killing of his own, um, number one. And number two, he allowed himself enough time to eat his food and then got the cameras rolling on me. So I am going to finish my that's, meal today. Okay? That's what we do, as you should. That was my yes, plan. Yes. So yes. Um, uh, interesting week. Uh, I, yo, okay. I want to talk about this too. Uh, y- uh, yesterday, yesterday, I made a post, and it was interesting because you called me about like something similar. Yeah. You, I, first of all, you stay jacking <laughs> my ideas. Okay? I'm not jacking your ideas because you and I had this conversation, and then you immediately went and made the post. No, but I I said something. I said something in our conversation that sparked the Thank post. You. No, I said something. No, you didn't. No, so you're talking about a um, this young lady who has a business, and they were taught. You you were saying that um, they've got a business in apparel. Okay, they got an apparel business. I said that. Yes, I'm. I'm not making it. I'm making it not, unreal. Yeah, but a real situation. So okay, okay. yeah. Right. Anyway, so Donnie says, yo, there's um this business that we should invest in mm, mm, because mm. did really well for the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. And right now it's it's down, pretty much. It's down. And I said, Oh, that uh the slide back is kind of scary. Scary. And she's like, Well, they the entrepreneur is still doing well in the other business. It's just this particular part of their business. Um, they're not, it's not, it's not doing what it used to do. And that's what sparked in my mind. I was like, yo, there's a lot of people, especially now that are experiencing this slide back in terms of, um, if you have a couple, a couple months in a row where your numbers are down, it really becomes, it's, it really gets scary because mm-hmm. it represents a lot, especially mm-hmm. in a person's mind, especially mm-hmm. if you don't know the seasons. Mm-hmm. So a couple things. Um, yes. Can you move your juice <clears throat> and your um, your Chick-fil-A hash browns? Because I want to put this box on there so we can talk about our friend. 
First of all, Dave, the way the level at which you get on my nerves. I'm here for that. I'm today. here for that. Are you here for this? Yeah, and Donnie came in with her shoes untied. Listen, let me tell you about my genius marketing strategy. Um, go to the wide shot, Zell. So I came in like this today, um, and it's primarily because I pulled these out of the box this morning. Mm -hmm. Number one, my guy, Celebrity409, so nice. so bright. Celebrity, my guy Soul Eberty on Instagram, Celebrity409. It's sent S O L E B R I T Y. This morning, fresh out of the box. He sent him some too, but he sent me these this morning, fresh out of the box. I had to pull out all the brown in my closet. I did that. I had to pull out everything brown in my closet. And I wanted to sit here and casually lace up my shoe because I don't wear a whole lot of brown. So y'all are going to have to see these. And these mugs right here are so cute. Yeah. These are so freaking cute. I'm going to call them cute. I say they fly. I got a pair too. Uh, fresh out the box, man. And and he's our official He's our, our official shoe plug. He actually is our so whatever official you need. shoe plug. And I got a package coming today from my daughter. Um, yeah. She got some some fours that are coming. So he, got, he gets the stuff early. Wait, from Celebrity? Yeah. Oh. Sobriety, yep. I need... Um, <laughs> Y'all will see his real Instagram in the description. <laughs> I wanna I wonder if my daughter is still young enough to get shoes sent to her. Yeah, celebrity. It's well, I, sure. I bought them. Oh, okay. Um, carry on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm just playing. I will buy them too. Yeah. Listen, these are so cute. Anyway, so what I was about to say is um, as we were talking about this, like I even see this happen even with my clients um, sometimes like you'll be up, 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 up. And then business just kind of takes a little bit of a dip. And this is why I focus on building the whole entrepreneur, because not only do you have to have the mindset to get through these dips without wanting to quit your business. Where's my juice? <laughs> what juice? Oh, right here. Who, put my, who would put my juice on the floor? Oh, my gosh. Continue. Not only do you have to have an open container of juice on the floor. You opened it. So. Not only do you have to have the mindset to survive and respect the ups and downs of business. Yeah. You have to build real business. And the reality is in real business, in real business, you will have seasons of slide backs. And it's not even necessarily a slide back. See, many of the entrepreneurs that we um, are familiar with are newer entrepreneurs. And they don't do any study or analyzation of their data, their mm -hmm. analytics, their metrics. So they don't understand that this is not really a slide back for them. This is just their normal ebb and flow of where they yeah. do business, you know, in the year. There will be some times when you're way up and then there's going to be some times when you're slightly down. And if you are preparing throughout your entire year, you are prepared like you can go from one hundred thousand dollars a month to forty thousand dollars a month for two months and not panic because you know that this is just that time of year where that happens. But I've managed my business so well throughout the rest of the year that I'm not worried. Yeah, it's, it still plays a, a, a very intense mental game, though. You know what I mean? Because if if you're if you're doing great and it, it, so, for instance, Let's say like whether it's YouTube analytics or podcast analytics, everything is up, everything is going well. One month, you're down 10%, 15%. Next month, views are lower. Next month, views are lower. Even if it's on Instagram, you're making posts, things are good. You make a post, nobody's really feeling it. The next post, not a whole lot of people are feeling it. Next post, you're kind of stagnant now. You start thinking to yourself, well, do, do people not do the people not like me anymore? Do I not am I not gonna get any engagement? And it becomes the beginning of the end in your mind if mm -hmm. you start to see it consistently. Because you don't know how long this is going to last. Yeah. So but you did say something interesting, and I told this story before, I'm just gonna tell it tell it again, and it's long. It's a long story. Do you wanna say anything before I tell this story? Tell your story. Okay. It's a really long story. Where's your girl? Never mind. Because <laughs> they're normally together. Okay, um, everything's good, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Y'all aren't like like trying to prevent an awkward moment by one of y'all showing up at a time, so we yeah. can't tell that y'all broke up. You're not beefing right now, right? Oh, Hannah for y'all or for her? Does it matter? That would just be a messy. I was being concerned. You're being messy. 
I wanted to know because they're investing in a project together. Right oh yeah, now. for sure. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, you, you don't wear socks with your shoes? I don't. I don't ever wear socks. My feet are <clears throat> amazing. Cool. All right. So here's the thing. Okay. This is my story. So when I first started working at the Cheesecake Factory, uh, well, not when I first started working, but nearing the end, I'm working at the Cheesecake Factory and I'm uh, I'm building my t-shirt brand. So two and a half years later, I come to the end around um, July, August. I'm like, yo, I'm about to leave this job because this t-shirt business is taking off. I still don't know my numbers like that, but I know I'm making enough money to leave my job. October 1st, 2012 is the first day as a full-time entrepreneur. I get a kiosk in the mall and it's up. Now, everybody's supporting me. I'm, I'm not even on Instagram like that. I got to turn it off. Um, I'm not on Instagram heavy like that. I think I'm more, more Twitter, but between Twitter and Instagram, I'm promoting, hey, I quit my job. People are excited for me. This dream that I've been building for for X amount of time, um, it's finally working out. And David is quitting his job. So I'm like, hey, come to the kiosk and rock with me. Up until now, people have been coming to my house. People were like, I would have to drop them off. I had this, I had what's called the backseat boutique. And I just have shirts in boxes in my backseat. And I'll pull up on you, find your shop, your size. I sell you a shirt. So I'm doing this for a while. So two and a half years into this business, I'm, I'm, I'm finally quitting my job. October 1st, I open up. In the mall, so much love, so much support. People pulling up on me all throughout the day in the first couple of weeks. It was amazing. And then um, November hit, end of October hit, it starts to slow down because it's no longer support coming. It's not like my friends coming to see me. Now I got to rely on the people that are walking in the mall. And I know how y'all do. When you're walking in the mall, you see the guy at the kiosk and you try to look the other way. You try, or you pull out the phone and you act like you're on the phone, but you're not on the phone with anybody because you don't want the kiosk guy to attack you. And I realized that at the kiosk, you have to do that or you're not going to make any money because you're not just going to walk up and say, hey, I'm going to buy something. You got to be, hey, come check us out. Come on. Anyway, I got to rely on that. I'm not good at sales. I'm not confident at all um, because I built my brand one by one, then word of mouth and things of that nature. So it's slow. End of October, slow. November, slow. What's up with you? What's wrong? You don't know how to tell you true? I got to the top of this one and realized I skipped a hole somewhere. <laughs> and, I, and it's the second hole so you gotta do it all over completely out of this <laughs> alright can I finish my story yes okay so yes so end of October slow November 1st comes and I have to pay the rent all my rents rent on my apartment rent on the kiosk and I think I was paying like $2,000 a month and I'm like whoa this, is, this doesn't feel good early November I'm feeling like I made a mistake because I don't have sales coming in. Like nobody's just pulling up on me and buying the shirts. No more support. Now it's trickling in, but it's just not enough, man. Early November was tough. And then uh, two weeks in, <laughs> it's still slow. <laughs> and the mall is slow. So I'm like, wow, the mall is going out of business. I'm, not the mall I'm going out of business <laughs> I start thinking to myself real thoughts I'm going to have to go get an overnight job where nobody can see me and I can't go back to the Cheesecake jobs. Factory because people are like yo I thought you just left and I can't I can't work in the mall at DTLR or Foot Locker because that'll look crazy so I'm like yo I'm going to have to get an overnight job because the mall closes at 9 I get to work at 10 to six, at least I can supplement because I don't have my job anymore. So end of November comes Black Friday. I'm starting to see my friends, people are shopping. I'm like, oh crap, it's up again. I'm gonna be rich again. It's all good. No more job applications. No more doing stuff at night in a uniform. I'm good. So November, that whole Black Friday thing, it works. I got some money. 
It's working out. December, it gets slow again in, the, in like early December. First two weeks, it's slow, and I get nervous again. And then the third week of December, it's popping again because people are in the mall shopping. And then at the end of December, slow. January, slow. And I am nervous. You hear me? Because I don't have a safety net. If I don't work on it, now I needed this port, I needed this 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 time frame though, because I needed to learn how to get aggressive with asking people to come by. I needed that. You know what I mean? I could no longer rely on people walking up. I needed this time to say, yo, if I don't get up out of this chair and start aggressively talking to people and flirting with people that I'm comfortable flirting with, hmm. I'm going out of business. Wait, you were flirting to yeah. sell clothes? Not the baddies, though. <sighs> because you weren't comfortable flirting with Correct. baddies. Correct. When you flirted, <laughs> did you actually exchange phone numbers? To what? Like I was promising dates and all that. Did you ever take somebody on a date in exchange for a T-shirt purchase? No, unless... I'm just trying to do the math, no, right? No, no, Because it doesn't add up. Unless I got lucky and one of them was like actually kind of cute and they just walked up. I, I definitely... That didn't happen a whole lot, though, right? Not a whole lot. No, not a whole for lot. sure not. Nope. Yeah. Um. So, hold on. Are you, saying, are you telling me it didn't happen because you're trying to roast me or you're just following the story? Well, I'm just saying... Oh, thank you. I'm just saying um, I'm anyway, following the story. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Forget it. Anyway... January, really slow. February, really slow. I, I, I had to stop getting all sad and saying I'm going to quit and really learn how to be aggressive because not that many people in the mall. And I started looking at everybody that walked by as people who had money in my pocket. But I'm still nervous because January, February, slow. End of February comes, money starts flowing again. March, early, it's hit. I, I'm telling you, it is going down. Most money I ever made in my life. And I'm like, oh, wow, I'm going to be a star again. Be rich again. And then it slows down. Here's the point. In uh, after a year or so, October comes around and it's slow again. And then early November, it's still slow. And then it gets busy after Black Friday for that week or so. But we make enough in that week so that so, so that we're good. For how long? Um, I mean, for until it picks up again mid-December because nobody's shopping after Black Friday. They're waiting to get closer to Christmas. And I'm learning these flows. So, mm -hmm. uh, like, back to school, uh, summertime, people are, I mean, yeah, they're, they're shopping a little bit summertime, back to school, uh, people are getting stuff for the kids, and, you know, we and it's a positive message, so I'm making money. But after that back to school thing, people are back to work. They're not in the mall. And then November, we're waiting on Black Friday time, and people start shopping. Then I start realizing, hey, I'm going to start doing Black Friday sales early November. So I'm not surprising you just so I can make some more money. And I'm preparing for early December to be slow because everybody's waiting for mid-December to hit. And then it gets busy again. January, it's a little slow. But February at the end, taxes hit. And it is going down. February, March, it goes down. My point in all of this was before I recognized the seasons, I didn't know what was happening. And I was just afraid. But once you have some sort of maturity and you're paying attention to what's happening there are certain factors that you just can't get away from so um all of those emotions that i wrote about in that post like you start thinking okay who can i give half my company to who got some money i'm serious bro i'm like i'm having meetings with people like yo we got this brand these are the sales of last year if you give me thirty thousand. I give you X amount of percent. You have your money back in a few months. And I think you can help me with marketing. And like, I'm starting thinking all this stuff goes through my head. Like who's going to come save me. Um, but it, that's, a, it's a real emotion for entrepreneurs because they just don't realize they're in a season. <clears throat> I agree. Um, I appreciate that. It took you 10 minutes to tell a Told story, you was a story but I warned you. <laughs> that I summed up pre your story, meaning a lot of entrepreneurs are new in the space and they've not yet had an opportunity to study uh, data and analytics and their time of year and their season. And so I think it's really important that before we start panicking, that especially in your first one to three years of doing business, 
you have to still look at doing business as market research. Like one of the things that we fail to do is research within our own company. So you hear the term market research, and that means that you're out studying your competitors, finding out what's going on with your competition, finding out what's going on with other similar companies in the marketplace. But you also have to do market research within your own brand within your own company. And this is why it's so important to document, 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 document. And you will be able to see, oh, well, January this year, I'm doing pretty much the same thing that I did January last year. March this year, that's how you're able to see where your ups and downs will be. That's how you're able to project your revenue. Like, can I really afford to quit this year? I don't know how much money I'm going to make this year. You should. If you've been in business more than two years, you should be able to predict in year three about how much money you're going to make based on, you know, the two years before. I don't say year one because year one can go, you know, crazy. We have nothing to really um, base it off of. But this is really, David, why um, one you got to get yourself a business coach like you just do. And this is no plug, but you have to get yourself a business coach because you literally can talk yourself out of business um, Two, you want somebody to help set and met monitor uh, your expectations that you have in your business. And it's really sometimes challenging because we are currently wrapped up in an environment where entrepreneurship is the wave. I won't say the new wave, but it's certainly the wave right now. Nobody wants to work. Everybody wants to start a business and everybody thinks that the results happen fast mm -hmm. and they don't not even for that entrepreneur who's posting screenshots and saying, oh, my God, I did this overnight. I did this in 24 hours. It didn't even happen fast for them. So we have to really, really set and manage our expectations. But also, in addition to like some type of coaching, it's important to get in other environments, get around other cultures, get around other groups of people, get around people who are in different industries is so important because I remember my first time in a in a mastermind that was super high level um, at this time I was not yet a seven figure income earner and everybody in the room was seven and eight figures it was my first time really being in a mixed learning environment for entrepreneurs meaning the room wasn't all black it was all kinds of people in that room and they were discussing strategies like this was the time where I could have sat in the back of the room and said, I'm not saying anything. I'm not qualified to be here. But I heard somebody on stage. I don't remember the gentleman's name. We were talking about sales strategies and they were asking uh, he was at, they were specifically asking about Black Friday. And the guy on stage said, I have nothing for you basically for a Black Friday sales strategy. We sit that one out. And everybody in the room was like, wow, you sit it out. Like, this is one of the highest selling um, days of the year. And he's like, yeah, it is one of the highest selling days of the year. But this is also where you get your highest amount of turnover, your highest amount of returns, your highest amount of issues within your company because you're fulfilling 10 times faster than your company is used to fulfilling. And you can't always keep up with that type of workflow. So he was saying for him, I'd rather just make no money during this part of the year and sit out and let y'all have that, right? Mm. All that headache that comes along with like a $10 million day or whatever that number is. And I had to stand up in that moment and I asked him like, how do you say like, What's happening in your business that allows you to say something like, I'd rather sit that season out and make no money? When you're saying you'd rather make no money, are we talking about like you'll do a little something or no money? He's like, no, we completely shut down. His, 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 his team in-house shuts down the week of Black Friday. They're not like they're coming off the other side of Thanksgiving. They're ready for that. But his team completely shuts down in that time period. And he said, we actually, in our budget, in our revenue budget, budget, we actually factor in not performing the week of Black Friday. Mm. And it was such a foreign concept for me, but then it brought me back to like my childhood growing up in New Orleans. Like during the week of Mardi Gras, a lot of the businesses and schools and everything closed down during that time. And people plan for that drop in revenue or activity. And when we're talking about a budget, first of all, getting into other rooms will help you realize how other people think. Like, and so in that moment, it was like, I'm not afraid to 
miss out on money. I'm not afraid to not make any sales that day. Like I can look at a month and I can find six days where I didn't make any sales, but I still had the highest revenue generating month of that calendar year. Right. So I'm, I'm not necessarily afraid of that. But the third part to that is I believe that entrepreneurs need to create a budget. Mm -hmm. And when I'm talking about a budget, I'm not just talking about monitoring what you're spending, but also monitoring what you're bringing in. Mm -hmm. So if your company normally does, let's just say a hundred thousand dollars a year, right? If your company normally does a hundred thousand dollars a year and you are trying to figure out in the second year what you're able to do, the first thing that I'm going to do is break down this one hundred thousand dollars over a 12 month period of time. And I am going to base every category that I need to spend money on based on my typical revenue that's coming in. So we'll do January, February, March. I'm just writing this stuff down so I can keep up. Um, but we'll do January, February, March. Now, over the course of 12 months, each month, you would think I have eight thousand three hundred thirty three dollars available to me to spend because that's on average what one hundred thousand dollars breaks down to. But you could be wrong and you could put yourself in temporary debt in your company by not understanding that, well, in January, we actually make $10,000 in that month. February, Valentine's Day, nobody's really shopping. They're focused on Valentine's Day. Um, we only do about $3,000 that month. And let's just go March and April. In March, we're back on track. We do $10,000 that month. April is generally an $8,333 month. So if I am looking at this budget and I see 10,000, 3,000, 10,000, 8,000, immediately based on my budget, I know that in the month of February where my revenue is lowest, I can't afford to invest in any kind of paid marketing. So the month of February, I'm trying to figure out how to really, really leverage organic marketing and things of that nature, right? Therefore, when my business takes a dip, I, ha I don't have to say, oh, let me pull all my ads unexpectedly. Let me pull all my ads. Let me fire my, my ad management team. Let me do all these things and start panicking. No, we knew that we made all this money in, D in January. So we're going to do a heavy load of marketing right here in January. But in February, guys, we pull back a little bit. Yeah. We're I, I want to I say, I, I think that's really, really important. What you just said was another part of the panic is, yo, I got to fire people or let people go or shut stuff down when... I, I think the ramp up sometime is when things are good and when things are good, you plan for things to stay good. Mm. And then when they're not so good, it's like, oh my gosh, I got all these expenses. I got to start like cutting some of that. Yeah. So I, my philosophy, especially some days are hard, right? Like it's tough. It's like, it's a lot, it's a lot going on, right? We're busy. Some days are like that. And I know Breeze be frustrated. Zell, he gonna try to smile through it, but K be over it, right? Um, but it's not that point where I start saying, oh, it's too much going on. We've gotta hire more people. Now they're probably saying, yo, we need some help around here. But then a couple weeks later, we're all sitting around the office just talking to each other. Mm -hmm. And then K gotta find stuff to do. Like yesterday she was cleaning. She just straightened it up and she went to get, we got the, uh, the Fabuloso, had the whole front smell like Fabuloso, right? So it's not a whole lot to do. I think Zell, he just had to edit some videos. Did you, um, did you get rid of the cleaning team? Everything okay? Everything's cool, yeah. But, but did she you get was rid coming, of the cleaning team? I didn't get rid of the cleaning team. You just reduced how many times a week they Yeah, come? for sure. Okay, that's because not fair she, to you, babe. Just putting that out there. Well, no, I mean, the lady was coming <laughs> twice a week regardless even if there's no events going on. So <laughs> my wife, my wife kind of set it up and I was like, oh, well, cool. That's fine. But I'm like, you just in here. So <laughs> we don't do nothing. It's just in the Seiko rooms. Anyway, but yes, I think um, people have to be careful with what they do in a busy season. Be careful with what you do. And like, you have to start to account for what happens if it's not busy. Yep. And in this moment right now, can we fight through this and get on the other side of it? But yeah, go ahead. I think you said something that was that was super important. Yeah, I mean, so those are just a couple of the things. Every first of all, let us also say this is obviously 1000 percent normal that you are going to at least for the first time have an experience of, oh, my God, 
my business is failing. Mm -hmm. I made money. Nobody's feeling me. I'm not the hot stuff anymore. That is normal. So if you are feeling that, as long as you continue to do business around that feeling and emotion, Mm -hmm. like you're going to feel a lot of things as an entrepreneur and you're going to process a lot of emotions as an entrepreneur. But as long as you are disciplined enough to continue to work through it, you're going to get through it Anyway, like it has to happen. If you keep going through it, you'll find your season. If you have not been tracking your business and not necessarily preparing for the slow season, but you got to prepare for the slow season. Somebody mm-hmm. would be like, I'm not speaking it into my business. Okay, cool. Well, just don't be prepared and go out of business. <laughs> you know, you panic um, yeah. when it happens to you, but it literally happens to every single business. The company that generates a million dollars a month, when their company generates $600,000 in a month, it's a problem. It's a panic, right? And so how do you prepare for the slow season? What are what are the things that you do? I gave three things um, really quickly. The first one is making sure that you have a coach. Coaching is so critical. It's so clutch because it just, it collapses the time frame for you to get a result. And it helps you to think through things from a business perspective, even when your feelings have entered the chat, right? But here's the thing though. So in the time you really need a coach mm-hmm. <clears throat> to get through the slow season. Mm-hmm. You don't have the money, so yeah. you're even you're double nervous to invest what you don't have in the person that can get me out of that. Yeah. So what I uh, and that's a valid point. So there are a couple of things that you can do there. Like if you don't have the ability to invest in a coach that can be on payroll or some type of uh, commitment with you, then start seeking all of the coaches out on social media, all of the people who are talking about your particular situation or join programs. Like that's why I brought back my actionable CEO program. That's why you have the morning meetup. Like there are people who can't afford a five figure investment in coaching, but you can stay in a community and find an accountability partner, at least during that time frame. Sure. But the moment you have the ability to like a coach for you in your business should be a part of your monthly payroll budget okay so that was the number one thing that I said and then um, the number two thing that I said is to uh, have different exposure into different environments so exposure into other environments where people are having higher level conversations around you and then number three is create a budget based on actual numbers and based on your actual numbers in the next year if this is your first time doing this then you'll be able to create projections that's how you get your projections by studying what your actuals are and then the following year you'll have these projections that you are now planning for shooting for that's the goal and you'll track them projections and actual numbers that's very important what you I, got i would uh, i would say you got to drop your pride hey i've been known to charge less than my worth, okay? I, I'll negotiate this worth, I ain't gonna lie to you. Depending on what I got going on. Somebody hit me and they said they wanted me to book me to speak for a certain amount. And I was like, ah, this is my rate. There's there's some people that, and maybe some people, they don't agree with this, but um, they're like, yo, your rate is your rate. Charge your worth and add tax. It depends. Somebody hit me, he's like, yo, I wanted to book you to speak for this amount. And I was like, well, if you can double that, let's do it. They came back and doubling what they asked me for is a little less than what I charged, but I'm like, okay, I'll take that, no problem. And they came back with like, let, like they meet me in the middle. And I was like, all right, <laughs> I'll take that joint. Hey, listen, drop all that pride, tough guy, okay? Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to go make some money. Now I'm not doing like random stuff. This is still within my wheelhouse, but I I realized that I had to I had to drop my pride, man. When I was selling t-shirts, and I'm like, yo, twenty five dollars. That's our number. Somebody, some coach told me, hey, don't negotiate. Your price is your price. But when the person has a crispy twenty dollars in front of me, and I charge twenty five plus tax. So it was like twenty seven fifty, but the person says, "Yo, I got twenty, and I need that twenty dollars, and it's cash." So I really gotta like rig it up for taxes. 
and, and I'm like, all right, well, with taxes, 21, 20, they're like, nope, I don't got the dollar 20. I got $20. And I'm like, I'll take it. Man, give me that twenty dollars. You know what I mean? You got you got to do what you got to do to feed your family. But some people they're they're so prideful that they're not flexible in their business. And I don't know if that's the right advice. I don't know. That's just my advice. I am thinking. Listen, I will I will discount something in a second. And when I stand firm on my price, that means things are going well. If I run a special, <laughs> it is slow this month. So that I don't, again, I don't know if that's the right advice, but uh, yeah, I've been negotiating my worth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's like that sometimes. <laughs> like you that know, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it is for sure like that. Uh, I'll say in the last two, three years, I've been standing firm on my worth uh, for sure. I've been standing firm on my worth, mm -hmm. and I have honestly found a bit of freedom in doing so. Like, I'll just miss out. Sometimes. You have money. Yeah, I said in the last two, three years. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely said in the last two, three years. No, but I have been standing firm on my worth. And especially this year, it has paid off for me so much. Like, I was looking like, man, I had far less speaking engagements this year than I've had over the, in the last five years this year. But I sorted for my speaker category revenue column, and I've also made significantly more money this year from my speaker category because I held firm on my rate. I had to do a third less of the of the work, right? Going all these places, speaking on different stages, simply by just staying firm mm. to my rate. Um, so anyway, there's that. Um, that was number five. Uh, that five. was number four. four. Um, number five. I would suggest that um, when we're talking about you guys, how to survive a slow season, um, number five, analyze your offers. Like you have to understand if you have offers that are relevant year round. Do you have offers that are just seasonal? Um, are your offers priced right? Like based on what's going on in the economy, like look at your offers is there anything that you can do? Do we need to add maybe a limited edition? So like, uh, especially at holiday time, if you're struggling to make sales, um, if your business is already like, it, it, sometimes when you're priced too inexpensive, holiday time doesn't matter for you because your, your product is already very cheap to purchase, right? And so nobody's excited about your holiday time because you nearly have to give your offer away for free. Mm -hmm. Instead of reducing an already inexpensive offer is create a limited edition yeah. of something like can you create something limited edition that will create urgency and drive sales and increase revenue um, into the company at that time like there's a limited edition like if you're a group coach expert, uh, maybe you have a limited edition one-on-one uh, -on -one offer. Mm -hmm. If you sell hoodies, maybe you have a limited edition t-shirt or a limited edition hat or a limited edition bundle. But when you do these things, it's very important that if you say something is limited edition, it really needs to be limited edition. Mm -hmm. Because the moment uh, consumers catch on to the fact that your limit is has no limits, um, it, it, you lose your sense of urgency. People yeah. stop taking you seriously. For sure. Um, I would, and maybe you have to help me formulize this into a step because sometimes the analytics and the numbers and the data and the projections, it doesn't help with the imposter syndrome, meaning even if, even if I'm in a slow season and this season is historically, is historically slow, it's really hard sometimes to get over the thought that, yo, it could be over or the economy's changing. Cause there's something all, outside of your business. There's always factors that affect it. Mm -hmm. I remember one time there was this big thing about the, the raise of price of cotton and I'm in a t-shirt business. So even if I know this timing is slow, I'm thinking, okay, this is normal that it's slow, but man, it's going to be harder to produce product and I'd have to raise my price and if it's slow how am I going to charge more even like the the data and the analytics it doesn't help with my mental state mm -hmm. of fear mm -hmm. so I don't know how to put that into a step though. so I would think that that's like um plug into personal development for sure plug into personal development Man. and so that's when 
you want to like that's your time to really study and go deep on what you're feeling. That's yeah. when you focus on your feelings and you're trying to counteract it with some sort of a solution. Yeah. Um, so if you're feeling fear, then read a book about overcoming fear. If you are feeling doubt, then read a book about overcoming doubt. You're lacking confidence. Read a book about confidence, like whatever is going to get you to that next step. Yeah. Would you agree? It's personal yeah, 100%, development. hundred percent personal development. We need that. Y'all the whole game is in our head. The whole game. My wife sent me a really dope text this morning because she's historically started stuff and stopped it. You know what I mean? She's new to this, not having a job, excellent at a job. She's had a job her whole life, but she's been a stay at home mom for the last, you know, few years. And she's like, yo, I want to get back to operating at a high level because in business, she's tried a bunch of stuff and she hasn't operated at a high level just yet because she's new to it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And going through pregnancy, kids, postpartum, having me as a husband can't be easy. Um, I love you, honey. Um, but she sent me a, she sent me a text today, a long text too, man. And, uh, she said, uh, she had like a couple, a couple points. She sent me a, a picture of atomic habits and she said, so I'm a new person. I've been lazy with bad habits and just not the person I want to become. My goal is to become better daily. And she's like, uh, I've been listening to this book at least one chapter a day. I'm currently on chapter six. And she went to the gym this morning. She said, I'm at the gym now. I'm getting back to who I'm proud of. Mm. She said, I just need your support while I'm on this journey. And I thought that was incredible, man, because she's stepping into a space that she's only seen through me and mm -hmm. Donnie. And she's giving herself grace mm -hmm. to learn. But the, the, the thing she what was most impressive is that she realizes a problem and she's doing something about it step by step. She didn't say, I'm going to read. I'm going to re read a book a week. She said, I'm listening to one chapter of this particular book that's going to help me with my problem because I need to adopt better habits. And I thought that was super impressive, man. I love that. I love that so yeah. much. Shout out to you, Dre. We love you. Get it together because your mind is where it starts. Bruh. And I will say, um, Dre birthed two babies back to back. That takes a mental toll on anybody birthing one child. My daughter is 21 and it still takes a mental toll on me <laughs> on, a, on a regular basis. Right. Uh, yes. You. Yeah. Okay? She got that face like I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> it still takes a mental toll on you. So anybody who has the ability to sometimes you're so deep into something and so, so deeply attached to how you feel mm -hmm. that you can't really identify how you feel, what you need to do, what should be the starting place. So anybody who's able to just use the inspiration that they have around them and start digging themselves out of their sure. own self-imposed funk, I cheer you and champion you on. Shout out to Dre. Love it. Number eight. So number seven was uh, plug into personal development. Personal development, y'all, before we move from that one, I know people hate to hear it because yeah. I used to be that person sitting in like the audience. I've paid. I gave you my last dollar to sit in this conference. <laughs> I, I didn't sneak in this time, okay? I didn't have anybody hold the door and pass me their ticket. I legit gave you my last dollar to be here and you gonna tell me to read a book? <laughs> you couldn't just send that to me in an email? You know what I mean? So I fully understand how it feels to be told Stay plugged into personal development, read the books, watch documentaries, talk to people at a moment when you're like really, really struggling. But let me tell you, if your mind isn't in it, yeah. you can't win it. 100%. Like I just made that up. Y'all write that down. Yeah. Tag me in the post. If your mind isn't in uh, it, you can't win it. It wasn't the biggest. Bar it was good. It was really, really good. I guarantee you somebody's going to tag that, me in the post. Was that, that a bar that made you say, "Ooh, no. He's typing it out. Look at all this. Because you out. told Look. him to. Look. Nobody, it's nobody Wednesday. did it. Wednesday. Nobody did it before you said, yeah, type that. Olivia didn't figure it out. Go ahead. Now, nah, if you're anyway, not, anyway, if you're not in it, you're not gonna win. If your it. mind isn't in it, you are not gonna win it. And you gotta keep like you gotta exercise your brain muscles more than you exercise any other muscle in your body. Mm -hmm. Like I believe in your physical mus muscle with your fitness. I believe in exercising your business muscle, right? And your mental muscle. You gotta exercise those muscles. Number eight. When you are in your slow season, a great 
survival mechanism is to work on the business. Mm -hmm. Dive deeply into working on the business. When you're so deeply involved in working on your business, you're not really paying attention to other things. But the reason why it helps you survive the slow season is because you start to get really creative. You start to remind yourself of what the vision is. You start to um, imagine, reimagine and remind yourself of what the bigger picture is, like where the company is going. When you start working on the business, you're doing things like um, upgrading to new systems. And as you're upgrading to the new systems and you're having conversations with your team or whoever those individuals are that are helping you upgrade to this new system, you can't help but to feel successful. You're having conversations like, yeah, so the reason that we're going to transfer from um, this system to this system is because the sales team needs to have a better flow. Like we need to get the follow up process, you know, in place. And also I need to be able to track my data and my analytics, but it's going to make me, it's going to make it really, really easy for me to strategically market. If I'm able to segment my audience using tech. like when you're having that kind of conversation, you can't lose the oomph factor for your business because you're literally so focused on working on the business and working on the business is where you are planning for and carrying out the vision that you have. So this is when you are going to, um, implement new systems, upgrade to new systems. This is when you're going to analyze workflows and figuring out, oh, this is where we can be doing some things better. Oh, I see that this is how the fulfillment center currently operates, but this is where we're going to do something better. This is also where you have time to now all those files that you just have stored on your computer. This is when you want to now organize your, your structure on your cloud, your servers, whatever it is that you're doing. You want to do a clean sweep of stuff that's no longer serving you and you want to get better or Organize, pay attention to the details. This is also when you want to look at your organizational structure. Your organizational structure is the structure of uh, people that you have in your company from uh, usually sometimes the founder down or the CEO down, right? So, okay, this is where I'm drawing out. Like right now, it could usually, I, I could really use a COO. Let me write out right now what we have to do to plan for a, CEO, a COO. Or, you know what? I've been meaning to all year um, restructure some people because I got a good team of people, but I don't have the right butts and the right seats. Like this is your time to start having that conversation um, when you are working on, on your business yeah for sure i would definitely say uh the next step is uh work on your skill set because I, I, one i i've had the biggest breakthroughs and the biggest um acceleration when i realized that i'm not as good as i think i am so in these slow seasons i'm blaming it on everything else i'm blaming it on the economy i'm blaming it on the staff i'm blaming it on the customers i'm blaming it on the news i'm blaming it on influencers i'm just blaming on all this stuff that i realize i really maybe i just need to get better at it and the better you are is something the more earning potential you have this was a this was a realization for me i made a post and it didn't do that well and i made another one didn't do that well I made another one it's just not doing that well so I'm like, man, hate Instagram algorithm. <laughs> but then I made a post that I stole from somebody else and that joint went crazy. I'm just not making good posts. You know, I'm just not filling my stuff. I just, the stuff I'm coming up with, you're just not liking it. And then I made a post yesterday with a long caption. They liked it. And so I'm like, now, now I'm, I'm looking at it from a different lens. Mm -hmm. How can I get better at making posts? What, like, what is it about the visual or the way I'm articulating it that people aren't feeling? And then when I make a post to my family, there y'all are again, y'all like them again. So it's not like, it's not, it's only went to a few hundred people. Cause when I make a post about my family, I get a whole lot of engagement. When I make a post about something else and I don't, I don't think the algorithm is 100% segmenting, oh, David likes this one. We're not going to send nobody. Oh, this one about his family? Listen to the mad people. He took it from somebody else? Listen at the mad people. I don't think that's the case. My point is, I'm always thinking to myself, how can I be better at what we're doing? Whether it's selling a product or facilitating a conversation as a content creator or making more content or... Um, like the show that we like, we're, we're going to do something on Friday. 
but we're going to start picking it up on Friday where it's a live show on YouTube every single Friday. Mm-hmm. It's not, I'm, I'm just going to outwork it and come up with a good creative idea. Hopefully other people like it and we'll do it. So I think the, the focus needs to point at skill set. And you better wake up, bro. This is a good, no, you're not actually. This is a good conversation. You, did you fly in this morning? You just got here? Okay, from the West Coast? Okay, I got you. Sit in one of them chairs, though, because it's distracting. You are dozing, bro. <laughs> Did you see it? I have seen it a couple of times. It's kind of distracting a little mm-hmm. bit. You good? Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say it out again, but I didn't put the cameras on you, but we will next time, okay? All right, go for it. Um. So I kind of want to separate this, but it goes into another one that I'm thinking about, but... Um, this is a good time for you to create team competitions. And uh, this is a good time for you to focus on your team. Let's say that I'll, I'll mm-hmm. put that in one category. And so this is a good time for you to focus on your team. And what do I mean by this? Like your team is is the place where that determines how your company is growing. And we need to show them a lot of love. Right. And sometimes when you are in your season, um, we can neglect our teams. We can forget to recognize people who needed some recognition. So during your slow season, uh, maybe you need to put some focus on your team. So how do we do that? This is this might be the time of year that you do your reward ceremonies. Like if you're a company that rewards your employees, you might want to do your reward ceremonies at that time. Um, this might be a time where you initiate some or implement some team competitions, team competitions. Well, let me not even go there yet with the reward ceremonies. When business is going slow, not only do you feel it, but your team feels it, too. And when they can sense that things are going slow in business for the company that they work for, that's a lot of times where they're thinking about like, ooh, maybe I should be looking for another job. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should uh, be thinking about my time here coming to an end. And when things are also going slow, your team starts to underperform. Like there's not a whole lot to do during the day and people are starting to now develop really, really bad habits. So rewards ceremonies re-excites people who have kind of taken a mental hiatus away from um, from from doing the everyday work because things have slowed down. This is also a time to do some team incentives. So this one is a revenue driver. If you are uh, struggling in business to make sales, things like that, how can you reward your team to go out there and work a little bit harder? How can they how can you reward them for putting in 10 percent more effort during this time going out there and getting the business? This is also a time. Remember, we're still focusing on our team. This is also for you a, a, a time for you to do team surveys, team surveys. A lot of times the people who are working with you have the ability to see things from the back end that you can't see. Right. So this is when you're asking them about how the company is running. This is when you're asking them about how they feel about how we're servicing our customers and clients. This is a time for you to ask their feedback. This is your internal surveying, your internal feedback that you are getting like, hey, where do you think uh, where do you how do you think we can best serve our customers? This is an amazing time to do that, because when your team feels involved in where the direction of the company is going, it encourages them. That's an incentive for them to work a whole lot harder for you um, or with you than they had been before because they feel like you value their feedback and value their opinion. And then as we're focusing on team, I would also focus on team training. This may be the time where you're bringing in other experts that are developing your team in areas that the team needs development. This might be your time where you're looking for conferences to send some of your key team members to so that they can learn. So this time now when they come back, Everybody, when it's when we're back in our season, everybody is they're they're pit bulls waiting for the gates to open. Like everybody has been trained, everybody has been rewarded, everybody has been incentivized. And when it's our turn again, we're coming in and we're killing it. Gotcha. And we're on ten now. Ten. Uh, that was ten. That was ten. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, in a slow season, I got it, guys. Mm-hmm. I got it. I'm telling you, this works like a charm. So get your pen and paper ready. Okay, get your notes. See, they're taking notes. <laughs> relaunch something 
Just get excited about something that you already got. Yo, I remember in slow seasons, I would I would take a shirt that I had up there for months and say, yo, we just, yo, we just dropped it. I'll make it like a video around that particular shirt. Yo, go check out this video about this shirt. I made a shirt about the blind faith joint. I sat in the studio, we made something. It was really my living room, it wasn't the studio. But we, sh we shot this whole video about a shirt that we had already been selling for mad long. So I'm like, yo, check out the new blind faith shirt. And I was relaunching something that I had already had, but because I was excited about it, other people were excited and they started buying it more. It was the craziest thing. You have to get excited in everything that comes out. You need to be super excited about it. So you do events in, uh, in the Bay Area. You need to drop, yo, we're bringing it back. Even if you did it last month. Yo, I'm telling you, we got an all new season. We're bringing it back. Yo, we see, we used to do these events, da da da, for the last six months. This time, we're bringing it back. Are y'all excited? You got to get excited about it. If you drop another, the same design in a different color, you've got to get excited about that color as if it's a big announcement. So I'm telling you, the, the excitement around what you're launching. Um, even if, just launch something and get excited about it because chances are people had no idea that you were selling this thing. Listen, as we, so we're building out a funnel right now for the morning meetup and I'm, I'm going to be promoting it like I never had it before. I'm going to be promoting it like, yo, this is the, yo, we finally, finally figured it out, y'all. We are launching the number one community. I know you've never, ever, ever seen a community that gathers every single day. And I looked at it and I looked at the market, looked at the landscape and I had asked myself, am I going to be committed to coaching you every single day? And I said, our community needs it. So starting this Monday, now it started like six years ago, but even as I'm talking about it, people who saw it, they're now excited. And very few people are gonna say, yo, that's, that's an old offer. <laughs> but because I'm excited, it seems like something new. Yo, first off, Apple does it every year. They drop the same phone and act with a, another, the, instead of circles, there's, it's a square. <laughs> it's the same exact camera. They get excited about the same exact phone and we go crazy over it and say, yo, I gotta have the new one. Mm -hmm. So pull out some benefits of something that you got already and launch it. You gonna relaunch your show? Just relaunch it. Just get excited this week. Yo, this Thursday, y'all, we retooled some things. You didn't retool anything. And you shot that episode a month ago. But we we retooled some things. Yo, we are coming back bigger and better than ever. It's the same show. But for somebody that's watching it for the first time or somebody that hasn't seen it a while before, they're going to say, yo, this new show? <laughs> yo, they retooled that joint? <laughs> <laughs> retooled it. They yes. retooled it. Relaunch. Yeah, relaunch or launch, but with launch. excitement. Excitement. It's it's the energy. Like you you mentioned that um morning meetup, you know, you come back whenever you are marketing it, it's like, yo, we're blah, we're this, we're that, we're the up. When when I launched Actionable CEO, it literally was about the excitement mm -hmm. that I had around, like literally, I can't wait for you guys to experience this. Like really, if I'm you, I'm gonna join just for this part right here. 100%. It's your energy, like mm, maybe relaunch with excitement, but I feel like during a slow season too, we gotta we gotta focus on just fixing our attitude. Mm -hmm. Like you talked about relaunching something, um, number thirteen, and I got one more after this, just in case you got one more. So we'll do fifteen. What? I'm on number thirteen. I thought I just did eleven. You you just did um, twelve. Yeah, you, you just did group twelve. Of yours in together. No, listen, number one, coach, get a coach. Number two, Donnie, is, it's okay. Just do your you thing. good? You okay, got the numbers. So number, uh, so we're gonna put this one real quick. Okay, in this excitement thing. Real quick, Reese, thing. can you show me my? I just oh, wanted no. to real quick and interrupt him the way he constantly. <laughs> hey, listen, guys, that's a part of why y'all like this. That's show. That's why y'all like this, this show. Here. Mm -hmm. So, all love. I'm going to. Anybody heard of Revolt World? Yes. You going? You going? You going? You going? You got a ticket? What's going? Do you know what's going on? 
for Revolt World? Exact. That's what I'm saying. Reese was like, yo, you going to Revolt World? You don't know what's going on at Revolt World. Why? Because they didn't even really say it like that. However, yes, it's just exciting. And we all just got to go. And I told Dottie this morning, uh, I was like, yo, they got Revolt World this weekend. She was like, word? Nobody, yo, I, I, no disrespect, no disrespect. We have no idea what's there. happening. I have no idea. And it, it came to my attention because somebody said the other day, I was like, yo, I asked someone, yo, you going to Revolt World? It was like, uh, I heard about it, but I don't know what it is, but I, I think we're going to go. <laughs> but they're just, the marketing, they're excited about it. So people get excited about it and they don't want to miss out on what's so excited. The way, look, Donnie, see how her legs are crossed a little bit? She's comfortable. Mm. No mm. shoes. Her foot is almost Mad on close. top of his shoe. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't had to do that. Hold on. They're they're both leaning on the same pillow. The lean rest. is crazy. The do you guys have you met each other before? Yeah, y'all met at po podcast summit, right? Or y'all born before that? Oh well, uh, wait. Are you, did y'all arrive here together today? Yeah. Oh. Hey, first off. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the Whoa, episode. Let's get back wait, to the wait, episode. wait, 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 wait. Are y'all dating? They don't have a mic. No, they're just friends. They're just y'all talk on the phone. Body language is crazy, though. I ain't gonna hold you. That body language is wild. Sharing the pillow. You're leaning here. Body language. Yo, they gonna kill Olivia on this one. They gonna kill Olivia. All right, let's keep going. Let's y'all attracted going. to each other. She all right. Uh, I feel like so. I feel like they played it cool right now. They're just not telling us. Right. She's like, you know, when we get in there, if we show up together, Donnie and Dave are gonna go in. Uh, because <laughs> no, like, y'all are too prepared. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah if yeah. I were showing up somewhere with you, Dave, I'm not concerned about how we walk in. Well, he's married. He's not. It doesn't always matter. Now, I'm but not he's not, concerned. He's not though. He's not. He's you feel not, me? That's what I'm and he's not. Hmm. Are you, what, are if you looking, I walked in somewhere with Terry or Zell or Reese, I'm not concerned with how I walk in. Let me ask you: Are you looking for something serious? Like, uh, yeah, serious too. Sure. But, oh, but I'm saying you're not looking to like fall in love, get married, like right now. It happens. It happens, but not really one of those things you plan. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Hmm. No. Let me she tell you, guys. I just, Donnie, let's get back to. It. I just said this last night <laughs> that sometimes we will delay our blessing because we are afraid to speak it out loud. Mm. Like we'll downplay it when you know that you're looking for a serious relationship and you want to be married. Like I've done this Some before, right? When you sometimes, if you keep saying like, if you know that you really, really want to be married, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm looking for friendship. It's but whatever. Some people ain't. They don't want that. No, 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 no. I'm not talking to that person. Days, so. I'm talking to the person who really, really wants it. Oh, I see. Like, if that's you and you really, really want her, like, don't keep downplaying it with that friendship Go talk that because thing. in a minute she's going to... Okay, because in a minute she's going to believe it. In a minute, in a minute you're going to turn around and she's going to be with somebody and then you're going to come to her and be like, yo, what happened? And you gonna, she's going to be like, oh, you said you wanted serious friendship. We have a very serious, I'm so serious about this friendship. You feel it in your body, body who you change your ways. <laughs> but I can see that you got it bad. You got it, you it's got a, it's it It's a little bad. something going on. Yeah, I mean, body you know, language is all I'm extreme. saying is I'll, for both of you guys, if there's a vibe here and there's something you want, don't downplay it like, oh, it's cool. Okay. I just want to be your friend because one day you're going to look up and your friend going to have a man mm. or your friend going to have a woman and you're going to be like, dang, I thought you knew. All I knew is that you told me you were ser you wanted a serious friend and here we are, seriously friends. But both of them could just have an open situation like, yo, let's just have a good time. Yeah, open here situations. For, um, for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> yeah, I'm, let, me st let me get off that. Get, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm off that. But anyway, you had the mic. You wanted to say something. No, I was so totally agreeing with you um yeah it was great feedback i guess hold I just on, hold don't the have, mic, hold can you hear me yeah. uh, i just don't have any expectations so mm. uh, i guess it's a balance between having expectations at the same time not really talking down um, yeah yeah i have learned to have expectations about everything really for sure for most things i, I don't i don't like to speak in absolutes look at them two over there it's crazy <laughs> i don't like to speak like, in no, absolutes no, no. but i do find like if i don't have an expectation about 
what I want to receive out of an outcome, then I could be wasting my time. Mm. And I'm not volunteering to waste my time. Like I expect that we are on the same page. If I am spending time with you, investing time in conversation, we go out, we're hanging out. I expect that we're at least on the same page about the direction of where we're taking this thing. I am not coming in here like, oh, yeah, let's hang out. Let's take all this time and talk, let's talk on the phone. Maybe let's even have sex. Let's spend money on dates. But I don't expect anything because the moment again she ends up or he ends up with somebody else, you're going to realize how many expectations you actually had. Not really. Oh, some for people sure. aren't. They are on the same page that I don't want nothing right now. What well, do whatever then you that's, do. that's your expectation. Okay, let's get back to business. And that you might need some therapy. Really? Yeah. Like if you are in a situation where you are comfortable giving your most valuable resources away, your time, energy, money, and body, I don't and agree. you offer no expectation or you don't have any expectations, there's probably something that you're masking as to why you allow yourself to be in that situation. I don't agree. There's a difference between just having a little bit of fun and this is and, and that could be it. I'm just having fun. Y'all have yeah, fun. Yeah. That's that's sometimes the goal. Let's just have fun. That's the expectation, though. Can we get back to the expectation? Is don't catch feelings for me, babe, because we just having fun. Yes, and, and there are situations where everybody's on the same page. With I that. have told people a couple of times or two, I am not who you want to catch feelings for. Yeah, you be putting voodoo on people. It's the wildest. <laughs> thing. Yo, it's the wildest thing, and I just can't figure it out. Donnie be doing something to these little boys. They just first damn. of all, I used to tell people that the old version of me today catch feelings, babe, and make it be known. Um, <laughs> and let me know all right anywho my next one so anyway the one was fix your attitude that was just a spinoff of what you said but that's not where fix your attitude like sometimes you are so negative about your own business that you are the reason that you think your season is so slow you are the reason that you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel and you are the reason why everybody around you seems to be underperforming because your attitude is poor mm -hmm. you get on your team meetings with this slow like oh woe is me attitude you come into your offices and you're dragging you are talking to other people and it's just negative and you know you your attitude is just so poor and guys your attitude can make or break you it will carry you or it will drop you along the way so sometimes you just need to fix your own attitude and talk to yourself like differently like we talked about the personal development but when we're fixing our attitude this is where you want to deploy your affirmations yeah. this is when you want to look in the mirror and say look I know that I'm qualified I know that I'm capable we're going through something right now but I do believe in my ability to figure it out like I'm going to figure this thing out we're going to turn this around like I understand that I wouldn't have come this far just to be halted to a complete stop right. at this time this is when you start talking differently to yourself about yourself differently to your business about your business and you have to in in this this attitude you got to have some expectations of yourself like this is what I expect of me I expect that even though revenue has taken a 40 percent decline I am still going to show up in my business as if we were at 140 percent increase this is when I expect that even though business is a little slow I expect that I'm walking in and I'm presenting myself to my team in a way as if we were at our peak performance you have to have a great attitude and put expectations on yourself, of yourself, of your business, of your team that keep you in the game. Facts. So that last was a whole one number. You. Yeah. Fix don't, your try to, don't try to limit me. And my, and my, That's the last one from you because I'm going to close you. it out. Like, I'm going to close it out well, with the last one. You started it with three. <laughs> yeah, because you didn't even know we were going down this lane. You're right. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay. And this is maybe not in the slow season, but I think this is a precaution for when it happens because it is going to happen. Everybody's experienced a slow season, right? Yes. Okay. I've been a full-time entrepreneur for 11 years. Every single one of those 11 years, there's been a time where I've made less than normal money, even compared to historically. It's like, this is down. But I think it's really, really important to not change your spending habits based on how well you're doing. There needs to be some sort of... Um, reserve that's put aside every single month if you do really really good we have the tendency to upgrade if we do really really good we got a tendency to buy stuff and i'm not saying buy a car or, you know buy clothes and stuff like that which some of y'all do 
because you want to reward yourself, especially if you're coming out of a down season and then you have a really good month. You're like, oh, I deserve it. You don't. <laughs> you don't deserve it. So there needs to be like there. You have to have a stream of income going somewhere else, a savings account, something. But don't start spending money because you have it. We have to. I, I really, really hope people understand this. You need to pay yourself a certain amount of money every if you if you if you especially if you've been in business for a little while and you know how much you're going to be making, you need to pay yourself a certain amount of money. I understand you're probably going to still dip back into the business to pay something. But put yourself on $2,000 a month or $1,500 a month or $4,000. Put yourself on some sort of consistent payment and that's how you operate. That's what you operate out of. Even to this day, there are some times where I can't buy a pair of $200 sneakers. Even to this day, there is a time where I can't, I can't go out and take my wife out and we have an amazing dinner. There's times because the money is funny in my personal account. I pay myself a certain amount of money. <laughs> I spent the money on stuff. And now I'm like, oh, babe, I get paid Friday. So actually we get paid the same day. So I get paid Friday. We can go Friday because I'm not going into the business to pay for our personal stuff. So, and it's not that I have, if I have a good month, I start paying myself more. If I have a bad month, it's the same. So you have to start saving uh, and it needs to be in the, in the, in the, um, what's the word? Not the process, but in the system mm -hmm. of your money flow. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep, yep. Oh, and if you want to like set up, set up your ADP. Okay. I got an affiliate with ADP and I like it. ADP.com forward slash social proof. Get yourself on a payroll. Um, I remember making a post. And you'll save $250 and you'll get this set up. You can set it up for he free. Gets on my nerves. No, no, seriously. Damn. For free. Because I, when I signed up for ADP, I had to pay. But then I built this relationship with them. And for you all, if you go to ADP.com forward slash social proof. Hold on a minute. Isn't that, um, when did you get that relationship with them? When did you get that relationship with them? When did you get, because... I created an ADP partnership for us. When? Are you kidding me right now? This lady, how did she come? She, I think she came to the studio and was like, hey, we want to, and she was hawking me for business too. What this is she? person too. Oh what's my her gosh. Name? What's your, what's your person name? No, we got somebody different. Hmm. Okay. But I set that up for us. Did you? Yes. And here you go. You didn't tell me on about your, it. I did tell oh you about my gosh. it. Here we Shans, go. I can prove here it to you go. that I told how you I about prove it. it. How did we I, say, how did this happen, Kay? It's not like I yo, know, I don't know how this lady got our nope. information, but she was going hard. Nope. This lady was going hard too. And I said, yo, I got a meeting with this lady where I'm gonna set, set us up on with an ADP. It's okay. I'll just change the affiliate situation and make it my own. Okay. Anyway, um, oh, adp.com forward slash social proof. Anyway, um, no, seriously, I remember making a post. Hold on, one last thing, I promise you. You are about to drive me insane. <laughs> and if you sign up, you get 20% off their services. adp.com forward slash social proof. So, this is the worst way to affiliate market. The, the worst way to affiliate market. But I'm, it allows, glad, I'm glad I didn't do it with you. I'm I'm glad you're frustrated. Mission accomplished. Anyway, so listen, payroll, you're talking about like managing your money, right? Mm -hmm. So do you remember that uh, we were having a conversation about um, me and you were on the phone one day and I think it sparked a, an Instagram post for both of us um, where I was like, yeah, money looking real funny until payday. Mm -hmm. And so I created this reel on Instagram and it was like, I was looking like, oh my God. And the, it was something like that moment when um, you got a whole lot more month left at the end of the month than money or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, or when you're trying to make your paycheck spread, whatever. Somebody commented and was like, I knew that y'all don't be doing what y'all really be doing. Like, how you a whole entrepreneur worried about a payday? My business don't operate like that. And it really made me think, like, how sad it is that this is your mindset. But on one hand, I understand it. I understand that you think as an entrepreneur that 100% of the money that you earn in your company belongs to you. Mm. 
operating like that is what will have you not be an entrepreneur for long. A hundred percent. Right. Um, you do what Dave is saying is so important. You do have to pay yourself accordingly. Put yourself on payroll and do not step outside of that paycheck. There are many times where I am li- I am still living check to check. Bro, to this day. Check to the to this day today. I mean, yeah. my first of all, I ain't even gonna go there. Uh, we but just got paid a little while ago. My, it's it's thin. A couple days ago. It's thin. Listen, my check be spent <laughs> before I even have an opportunity to receive it. Like the deposit ain't even good. My, <laughs> but literally pay yourself. But when you're in a slow season, you will feel so tempted to dip into that other bank account. So tempted to be like, I still want to maintain my same eating habits. Mm, mm. Not this month. Yeah. Not this month. 100%. Whatever you want to do needs to fit into that paycheck. And you got to wait like everybody else. Yeah. One thing I used to do too is if we if we go out, I'll just use my business card. Because like when we go out to dinner and stuff like that, it's a business expense. But I stopped doing that if it's personal. So... <laughs> In person, like even if, because you know we'll go eat. Like me, you, Dre, Mm -hmm. we'll just go eat, and I'll just put it on my business card because okay, I'll write it off as a business expense. But it's I realize what it's doing is it's giving me a false sense of me thinking I have money. Have money. So I I always if I'm going out like just personal, if it's a personal thing, I use a personal card Mm -hmm. because I know I have to pay that personal that personal amount back, and it's. It, it squeezes you to think, yo, I'm, I don't have just endless flows of money. And you, you would be surprised how much money you save with this, this, with this mindset. So if you go to ADP.com forward slash social. Oh food, my goodness. You'll get some better videos. All right. The last one, you guys, do you have any more? No. Do y'all, do y'all pay yourself though? I mean, entrepreneur, just, we're not going to put the camera on you, but like you really, it's, it's triggering for you as an entrepreneur, this conversation we're having, you need to get your, Financial flow, just raise your hand a little bit. Because he wants to send and you to ADP.com forward slash. You're a full time entrepreneur, program. right? You're struggling with it. I know it. Raise your hand. I know it. I know it. He just tries to sit there like, no, we struggle for sure. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, we really, really do. Like, but think about it. Many people struggle to go into the workplace, which is an environment where your daily tasks have already been set. For you, yeah. you know what you're doing every single day when you go into work. You know what's expected of you. You know what reports. You know what deliverables you have. You know what to do. Entrepreneurship seems like it's super easy, and you've got this abundance of freedom, and it's for you. The trouble with that is, or the struggle with that is, it's for you. So you don't have a clear framework. You don't always know what you're going to be doing every single day. The relationships. The processes, the workflows, it's not already built out for you. Your journey is about creating that along the way. Like you're literally figuring out every single day for a long time, every single day, how are we going to make this money today? Mm -hmm. How are we going to get this done today? How are we going to make this payroll today? Right. Right. Um, And so give yourself some grace, definitely in that area. Like, and when I say give yourself some grace, I mean, just simply understand that all of the things that you are feeling Everybody else has probably felt too. And these things that you're feeling are most likely normal. The people who survive it, though, the people who live to tell the story after they already have some money or after they've already made it through that storm are just the ones whose feelings weren't uh, affected or or whose business wasn't affected long term by their feelings. Right. The facts have to outweigh the feelings. The facts are everybody's going to feel this. The facts are every business is going to experience this. The facts are everything that's happening right now is normal. The facts justify your feelings. But because of the facts, that's why you got to continue to push through. For sure. For sure. So the last one. That wasn't the last. No, I'm, this is, this is, you're not even paying attention. I was elaborating off of what you had going on. All right. The last one, if you are in a slow season, sometimes you simply rest. Sometimes the answer is rest. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the answer is not to spend your time trying to figure things out. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect opportunity for you to recharge, reset, 
get you some rest and get prepared for your season again. And this is also great advice for the entrepreneur. You, you're making money. You already have some money. Um, you, your business has generated re regular revenue. You're not necessarily like back up against the wall financially. You might be a higher level entrepreneur. This is your time to rest, to avoid burnout. Take this season, go on a one week trip, go over somewhere and meditate, go spend some time with your family, go pour back into yourself during this time so that you are not over anxious, overworked and overcharged when it's time for your season to come back. Yes, there it is. And I'm not even going to try to top it off with nothing else. Nope, because there is nothing else. There's after man that. more stuff. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, hold this on, real was quick, real quick, real quick. And this would be for, this. This would be good for both of us. Is okay? this a bonus, Shan? A little bit. Well, you kind of said it. Okay, R run back through them. So, I'll see if all I right, real that. quick to recap: the fifteen, <laughs> uh, fifteen things to do to survive a slow season. Number one, hire a coach. Number two, get exposure into other environments. Number three, create a budget and abide by it. Mm -hmm. Number four, drop your pride. Number five, analyze your offers. Number six, plan your sales season. Number seven, plug into personal development. Number eight, work on the business. Number nine, work on your skill set. Number 10, create team competitions. Number 11, focus on your team. Number 12, relaunch something with excitement. Number 13, fix your attitude and commit to your affirmations. Number 14, manage your money properly, which is different than creating a budget. And number 15, rest. Yes. And bonus. Okay. <laughs> Join a community where there's a coach and colleagues. Yeah. Colleagues that will, uh, you can see that they're going through the same thing and you're not in no special situation. Colleagues that can help you get out, like sharing resources, things of that nature. And also a coach has been there that can inspire you, help you get out of it, things of that nature. And we have two really, really good options for you. One is the morning meetup. The morning meetup .com, We join we gather every single day, Monday through Friday. We actually start at 7.45 a.m. with a come on, guys. We can hear you. It's okay. It's all good. Uh, it's, Two morning meetup members, you know what I mean? Just over here, just chopping it up. Um, but uh, we enjoy, we, we gather every single day. It actually, call starts at 7.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we go over the book read every day because we are always reading a book together. We're literally on the same page, same chapter. And we read about 15 books a year together. And then um, we have a topic that we discuss every single day. I'm on there every Thursday, q and I'm on it throughout the week as well, but we have a community of people. Donnie also has a community. If you think she did better on this episode than I did, join her community. You know what I mean? Because I believe in abundance <laughs> and creating a space for us all, uh, I welcome you all to check out The Morning Meetup. The Morning Meetup has been here for six years. I hate the fact years. that you're doing this right now. I hate, the Morning no, Meetup has no, been here. No, fight for, with me. Daddy, the stop, Morning Meetup has been here road. for six years. <laughs> I have had the privilege and opportunity to be a guest mentor inside yeah, of The Morning right Meetup. And I believe in everything that David stands for. I hate when she switches it up. Yes, know? yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I, too, have a really amazing uh, community called Actionable CEO. This is a private mentorship community for entrepreneurs who are seeking personal, uh, professional, and financial growth. Um, inside this community, if you've been looking for an opportunity to work with me, we have we have significantly reduced my availability for one on one coaching. So this is your opportunity to be developed uh, by me and my frameworks. If you need to be taking action right away on things that are currently pressing in your business, uh, we do weekly. We do not meet every day. We do weekly live mentorship sessions, which is why you don't even have to choose. You know what I mean? Like we do weekly sessions. Dave does daily uh, sessions. I give you access to my CEO resources library with tools and things that you'll need as a CEO outside of mentorship, action steps to use right now, and virtual co-working sessions uh, with me and my team. So I let you guys in on like my team meetings and things that we have going on so you can see how a high level business is operating um, on the back end. And like I always say, honestly, I would join just for that. Um, actionable CEO, $97 a month, actionableceo.com or morningmeetup.com meet me at the morning meetup.com 
you will not go wrong with any decision. Just do them both. Or just do them both. Do them both for the year. Do them both. And that's the best way to do it. Just go ahead and get like this. This this isn't fluff stuff. This isn't us just trying to sell a thing. Um, actionable CEO will be the number one uh, entrepreneur resource in the world. Like I'm not. That's that's going that is our mission. I want to be like David wants the number one community for entrepreneurs uh, in the world. I want to create an opera in, in a um, an environment or a community that becomes the number one resource uh, for entrepreneurs like a school, if you will. Um, of things that you can do to become a more actionable and effective CEO. So they actually complement sure. um, each other very, very well. You need us both. That was very mature. And we're out of here, you guys. Uh, like, we will subscribe. see you. We out of here. <laughs> Bye. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.